Hey, Derek, welcome back, buddy. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Awesome, man. It's good to see you again. So, yeah, Derek is the first guest to come back on the Publishing Profits podcast show for the third time. <laughs> he was here uh, episode 24. We talked about, you know, creating book marketing strategies for long-term success, as well as some really cool tips on saving money when you self-publish. And then in episode 94, we talked about, you know, developing the success mindset and some really awesome, powerful personal development advice for authors and entrepreneurs. And so I brought Derek back today because he is the like, go-to expert right now, uh, the top expert I've seen on Amazon's new uh, Amazon Marketing Services ads platform, right? So it's the ad program Amazon has to help you promote your books on Amazon. And he's going to talk about how you can use Amazon ads to skyrocket your book sales and earn a really great return on investment. So if you spend, you know, a hundred dollars, you're going to get 200, 300, 400 dollars in royalties. So Derek, um, how did you even find out about Amazon, these Amazon ads? Well, I first discovered Amazon ads uh, as they came out. It was a, a few years back. They had their product display ads and I experimented a bit with those and didn't see uh, that great of results. Uh, I rarely, if ever made a profit with them. And if you're not familiar with what these ads are, it's where uh, if you were on a particular book page and below the buy button, uh, you'll see a little box there, uh, which is basically another person's book that's advertising. And um, I did that and didn't really see uh, enough to get excited about. So I experimented with it for a couple months and then uh, basically just sort of forgot about it. And also during this time, you know, 2014, 2015, I'd experimented with Facebook ads. I wasn't able to really make them profitable, although I think they can be good for, for list building. For me, it never led to direct book sales at a profit. And uh, so I sort of forgot about it. And then last year in 2016, Amazon released sponsored um, product ads. And so I checked that out, I think very shortly after it came out. And what this allowed you to do is actually go in and target specific keywords. And so I got very excited by it. And I immediately started experimenting. I uh, really put a lot of focus and energy into it when it first came out. And what ended up happening was I generated uh, within about less than eight weeks an additional $3,505 in extra book sales on top of what I was, was already selling for I think just a couple of my books uh, that I use the ads for. So right away I saw that there was a lot of potential with it, but I also didn't want to just go out and tell the world I thought maybe okay maybe it works for my books but let me test it let me test it with a different uh, you know genre of books so I as opposed to just self-help and, and fitness which is the categories I was in so started testing with some cookbooks that I had I then got some of my students to experiment with fiction and different styles of nonfiction and after testing and tweaking and optimizing the strategies uh, for you know these different styles of book I found that consistently across the board as long as the person had a book that was you know converted well uh, you know all the factors that you would want in place for a you know a good selling book great cover title description so on uh, that across the board these ads were incredibly profitable and on a high scale so not just like an extra sale a week like uh, one of the craziest results I saw was uh, um, someone who spent $20 and got an extra thousand dollars in book sales within about a month now that's the exception not the norm but those were the kind of results I was seeing and that's what got me excited and why I've continued to uh, study ads and, and optimize them over the past uh, almost year now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I think our best in terms of like return on investment ads we've seen is like a fifty dollars spend for a thousand dollars in sales, um, which is awesome. And at the same time, you know, from my perspective, I don't really care so much like if I spend five dollars, fifty dollars to get a thousand in sales. Like I really just get more sales, right? Yeah. So if it costs me, you know, five thousand dollars to get ten thousand dollars in sales, like there's more profit because you're getting so much more sales and you're getting more customers and more readers. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the key is you have to be making more money than you're spending. Right. So, so how do you go about like when you're creating a new campaign, how do you go about making sure that you're actually making a profit? Yeah. And I, I love that you brought that up uh, about making the total amount of sales. So we'll touch back on that because with the way Amazon works, it's not just about the percentage of ROI. It's also really kind of about the total sales that you make. And we'll, we'll cover that in a, a minute about why that is. But to begin with making a profit um, is a matter of, well, first of all, I'll ask a, a bit of a hypothetical um, question that's going to expand the listener's mind. And I would go, 
I would ask something like this. Um, what's better to make $10 or lose $10? I'll just leave it like that. You know, and if I ask that question, what do you think most people's answer is going to be? You want to make money, of course. Yeah. Now, here's a caveat, though. What I don't reveal is if you make $10, but you don't learn anything from that experience versus if you lose $10, but you get valuable insight that's going to help you make $100 or $1,000 down the road, I'd rather lose the $10 for that valuable insight. And so this is what marketers do. If you think about marketing, there's a lot of things like, running a survey, you know, let's say for a book cover. Well, you might spend $30 on a PICFU survey, for instance, but why do we spend money? Because we know it's going to help us make a lot more down the road. So getting into that long-term mindset, that's the first thing to have is, is this more big picture long-term mindset and going, it's okay if I spend five, ten dollars on an ad campaign as a test to see what works and what doesn't work. Okay. So that's the foundation I want to lay down, but we do want to get to a profit ideally sooner rather than later and not be spending too much money before we start uh, seeing a profit. So there's a couple general guidelines. And the first thing is uh, when you bid lower and this is really kind of relevant to the category that you're in, but if you bid, you know, five, 10 cents on your keywords, that's generally playing it safe. And generally speaking, uh, if a lot of the, if you, choose good keywords, you have a good book and so on and so forth, then at that low a bid, you're much more likely to be profitable in terms of your ROI, as in you're going to make more than you spend. Now, the downside of that is you might not make as many total sales. And so this goes into um, the next sort of mental thing. And that is um, if you could spend a dollar to make a hundred dollars, or you could spend $100 to make 200 or I'm sorry, $100 to make $500. Well, I would actually rather do, and let's say that's every single month, I'd rather do the second thing. I'd rather spend $100 but be making $500 than $1 to make $100. And the reason being is it's more total money. It's more money in, in pocket. And the thing with Amazon ads is it's not something that you can scale up on an infinite level, okay? and I'm just going to kind of keep it on that. We can talk more about that, but I know once we start throwing out a lot of numbers, it can be uh, sometimes challenging to wrap the mind around unless you actually have experience with it. So the flip side though, I'll say is if you bid higher and you test out higher bids and go more aggressive, you can start to find keywords um, that do well and generate more sales. You might be paying a little bit more for them, but you can get more overall total sales. So Finding the balance between those two and strategies for doing that where you maximize your ROI and also maximize the amount of sales that you make, that's really a, a lot of what I teach and what I work with my students on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, what is like, what is like the minimum budget you need to like actually test out a campaign and see if it's actually going to work for, for, for one book? Yeah. So, I mean, according to Amazon, the minimum is a dollar a day. What I would recommend, though, is uh, you can start with, you know, three to five dollars a day for up to about a week. I like to have at least a week's worth of data to really see how something is going. So if you consider that, um, you know, twenty dollars is enough on an ad campaign to get some good data um, to to see how it's performing. And in fact, you can be even less than that. Sometimes five, ten dollars, you can get a good amount of impressions, clicks, and start to see how a campaign is uh, is going to go. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so I, th I think we should clarify at this point, like, like how the ads actually work. So, you know, like the ads appear in search results or on a book page or whatever. Someone clicks the ad and it takes them to your book page on Amazon, right? Does it take them to like the Kindle page or the paperback page or how does that work? So typically if you're running your ads out of a, out of your KDP dashboard, which is, this is available for all KDP authors, Kindle direct publishing authors, uh, whether you're in KDP select or not. Uh, so now it's open to all KDP authors. And so when you're advertising like that, it's advertising your Kindle book. However, many people who click through to your Kindle book, uh, which is what it'll typically do, will also end up switching over to your paperback because I've seen um, a very high increase in paperback sales along with ebook sales by running ads. Now there's a different platform you can use that will allow you to target paperback books directly. Uh, we may or may not get into that, but for most authors, it's going to be targeting their Kindle book with the understanding that you'll actually see an increase in paperback sales. 
which is why if you don't have a paperback edition of your book, I would highly recommend getting one. A, just in general, it's a good idea to, to have that extra source of royalties. And B, especially if you're doing uh, AMS ads, uh, then that can really help get you some extra profit and income that will help pay for the ads and get you an even better ROI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, especially if you have an ebook that's already selling well, if you don't have the paperback version of that book, it's like you're just leaving money on the table every single day you're losing money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so once you start your campaign, what are the campaigns that you found to be most profitable in general? Like, like what is your, like if you're starting a new campaign, like what is the one campaign or type of campaign that you're like most excited about? Cause you know, it's most likely to make the most money for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of type of campaign, when you go to Amazon, we talked about sponsored product and product display. So it's sponsored product for sure. It's a type of campaign. And when you get into there, um, you'll select the book from your dashboard. And then the next thing that you can do is you can choose if you want to do an automatic targeting or a, uh, a manual targeting. Now, the manual targeting is what I recommend. Um, generally speaking, it's going to be more profitable. You can get more features. And what that means is when you select that, you then add keywords, you tell Amazon what keywords you would like to target. So by going in there, doing the manual targeting, and then you can add up to a thousand keywords. So one of my big um, recommendations for, for many authors is cast a wide net, especially at first. You can always pause keywords later or reduce the bid if they don't perform. Um, but cast a wide net and I recommend adding hundreds, if not eventually, not at first, but eventually if you can get up to those thousand keywords or even more, all the better because that's more data uh, that you can use. And here's why. Amazon only charges you when someone clicks a keyword. So you're not paying for a keyword if no one clicks on it or if they decide it's not as relevant to give you impressions. It's not typically going to be that big of a deal. Uh, because you're just looking for the keywords that do perform. And so you can have uh, your general search type of keywords, you can have book titles, author names, and you can get all of these keywords into your campaign. So I found the best performing campaigns, the more keywords I have, generally speaking, the better. Mm, yeah, definitely. I found this exact same thing. So how do you actually go about keyword research in the first place? So there's a number of different strategies for this. There's some things that can speed it up using different software and, and things like that that I, I you know, share and have trainings on and things that go more in depth to give something just on a, you know, quickly speaking it out uh, to explain it. I would say that you can go to uh, the top bestsellers list and look at the, the authors and the titles of those books in your category. You can go to even semi-related categories. It doesn't necessarily have to be directly in your same category. Um, for instance, I notice with the book on uh, personal development targeting business books or targeting books for uh, multi-level marketers, you know, that's still going to be close enough relevancy that, you know, that type of audience would be interested in it. Or just because something is uh, historical romance doesn't mean uh, you can still target contemporary romance. For instance, you can go across genres to some degree. Uh, also in your keyword search terms then. Uh, there's a site called Merchant Words, which is great for coming up with keyword ideas. Uh, there's Amazon search recommendations. So if you type in, uh, start to type in a word on Amazon search, uh, and you're in the Kindle store, for instance, it'll tend to auto-populate it. So um, there's videos and things. That's why it's a little challenging on podcasts to explain it. But if you're familiar with the keyword research process, and I know Dave Chesson, for instance, has some great resources. Tom, I know you have great resources on, on your blog for, for all these different things. Then you can get, uh, get ideas from that. And also, if you find, um, once you're running an ad campaign, if you find that you're getting good results with particular keywords, then kind of follow that, that trail in a sense and go, what are more keywords related to that that I can then add to my campaign? Because I've already seen it's been proven to work. Yeah, definitely. So there's some great takeaways there. Like obviously, you know, figure out how to do keyword research, get some tools that, that you feel comfortable with and you like to use. But also I think it's really super important is, you know, I've noticed the same thing. Some of our best keywords with the most profitable and the most sales seem like crazy, like not related to the book. So like when you, when you, you know, start a sponsored product, sponsored product campaign, 
you know, Amazon like suggests these different keywords. And so sometimes I'll just add all the keywords they suggest, or, you know, I might use like a keyword tool that will take like something like, you know, contemporary romance and give me like a hundred or a thousand different keywords kind of related to that. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome when a keyword that you think is like, has no chance of doing anything for you happens to be one of your most profitable keywords. So that's something I would definitely say is like test out lots of different keywords, even if it seems not so related. And a really good tip on that is also try to think of like, who is your reader, right? So like you said, you know, with a network marketing example, if you have a book on personal development, well, network marketers tend to be really into personal development. So even though your book isn't necessarily for that market, it's the same kind of ideal reader. And so those ads and those keywords are more likely to convert for you and actually get you sales. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's the, you know, the, the nutshell way to put that as, as mentioned is cast a wide net, uh, be willing to experiment, be willing to go a little bit outside of, you know, the narrow genre thinking, uh, of, you know, okay, well it's in this book. So it's gotta be just these types of keywords. Uh, cause when you cast that wide net, once again, you're only paying if, if it gets clicks, you're only paying if it gets, uh, people actually, you know, checking it out. And so there's not, uh, once again, there's not a, a risk to trying something and then people, if, if they don't click on it, then there's, there's no cost to that. Yeah, totally. So that's a great word risk, right? Because I think that's one of the biggest issues, especially with new folks who have never done like ad campaigns before or folks, maybe who try like Facebook ads to Google AdWords. Cause like on Facebook and Google AdWords, I mean, you can spend like $10,000 a day, like a hundred like thousand dollars a day. Like if you don't set your budgets and you're, and you're targeting really competitive keywords, like you can just lose an enormous amount of money like that. Right. Um, how do you protect yourself from that kind of risk with Amazon ads? So first of all, I think built into uh, the system is it's not as likely to spend as much money per day, which is a pro and a con. Um, part of what uh, I train in is, is actually the challenge is actually how do you scale these up? Because once you see the results, it's like I actually want to spend more. Sometimes I wish I could spend $1,000 a day. Now there's techniques for that, but uh, the first thing to understand in terms of risk is you're probably not going to spend that much a day unless you bid really high. So that means if you start with more conservative bids if, as you're first starting to get to learn this, so for instance, you know, five to 10 cents, uh, then that can be a safe bet. Now for some categories, that's too low. It's not going to be competitive enough. Uh, but it's also for other categories, that's kind of a, a good starting point. Second thing is you can cap your daily budget. Like I mentioned, you can do is you can tell it to spend only a dollar a day or only three dollars a day or however much you can do. And then finally, you can also uh, set it to run for a specific period of time. Now, most of my campaigns run on an ongoing basis, meaning I can just set it and forget it and it'll run all month or all year if I want it to because I know it's making um, profit and then I can pause it if I want to, to update it. But you could also choose to run it for five days at a time or run it for seven days only. And that way, you know, if you, if you forget about it, you can always go back to it and you know it only ran for seven days. It's not gonna eat up um, a big budget. So all of these things can mitigate risk. And the biggest risk mitigator out there, um, I think it, just in business in general, is education. Getting educated, knowing what you're doing, knowing the ins and outs, that is, uh, probably the biggest thing that's going to reduce risk for, for anyone. There's a quote, a mentor of mine, um, his wife actually said this. She said, you can either spend your money learning or lose your money learning. Either way, you're going to learn. And unfortunately, I see a number of authors, they get into Amazon ads and they don't really know what they're doing. So they are spending money and they're losing money and they don't know what's going on. And then maybe they go onto forums and try to figure it out and they're getting these different ideas and, and, it's like, it just makes a lot more sense to invest in the education up front, get the proper training, learn from people like, you know, if you're listening to this, obviously you're making a smart move by educating yourself. So I'm a little bit preaching to the choir here. But getting that education and getting the in-depth education will be probably the biggest thing to mitigate risk uh, for it. And at the same time, be willing to, as I say, spend, uh, invest a little bit of money uh, to figure out what doesn't work. You know, a lot of my approach is let me just spend $20. I know I might take a loss. I'm going to bid really, you know, uh, 
I'm going to put really aggressive bids, but I'm okay to lose $20 because I'm going to get enough data to learn that on my next campaign, I'm going to make some adjustments and I'll be able to make hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. And I just needed to, you know, invest a little bit of money up front to, uh, to get some information to work with. And that's true of a lot of different um, advertising platforms. But like you said, Facebook, sometimes people spend hundreds of dollars on Facebook ads until they get them, you know, tweaked and optimized to be profitable on Amazon ads. I found rarely does it take spending more than maybe 10, $20 to get enough data to learn, you know, what's going to work or what's not going to work. Mm, yeah, definitely some great points there. So, you know, my experience with Amazon ads is like when it works, it's just, it works. It's like so easy. It's like you put the, you put the keywords in and it just works automatically. It's like magic. Right. But there's sometimes where, you know, you put the keywords in and maybe you're not getting traffic or you're not getting clicks or maybe you're getting traffic and clicks, but it's not profitable. So how do you troubleshoot those kinds of problems when you have a book that's just not performing well? How do you troubleshoot that? Yeah. So there's basically two things that I want to look at uh, if, if a book isn't performing well with ads. The, thing, the first thing is the ad campaign itself. The second thing is something about the book and the conversion. And so, for instance, if I see a, a something that's getting a lot of clicks, uh, maybe it's gotten several hundred clicks but not too many sales, I'm thinking, okay, either the keywords in the ad aren't relevant or the book page itself just isn't converting, you know, is there something with the covers or something with the description? Can I change something uh, there? And this is especially something I notice with, um, you know, if you have an author who's typically newer or they're still trying to kind of figure out their positioning in the market, they might have more conversion factors such as not a lot of reviews or they don't really have a, a great captivating description written for the book. So that might be uh, the area to start if you see a lot of clicks, not a lot of sales. But then let's say you come back and you go, well, I know the book converts. I know it's a popular book, but my ad just isn't um, performing. So one thing to consider is Amazon's got their own algorithms. I'm still you know, figuring this out myself in the sense that no one really knows what Amazon's doing behind the scenes. But as I send them emails, I get a little, some clues. For instance, uh, one email said that they do um, adjust some of their sponsored ads based off of the browser, I, I'm putting it in my own words, I think the browser preferences or what they think the browser is going to want to buy, right? That's big on Amazon's algorithm is customizing what they show based on the actual person browsing and what they think they're going to be interested in. So um, with that, part of that's a little bit out of your control, but what you can control then is let me test, you know, all the same keywords, but at a lower or higher bid. So interestingly enough, sometimes bidding lower on all the keywords actually gets better results, more total sales. Oftentimes, though, bidding higher helps you break through the, the competition and start to get some traction and, and some clicks. And then there's a process to go through of, you know, adjusting each individual um, bid. So the simple answer is sometimes it's test and see. You test something for a week and then based off the results you get, you go, okay, I'm going to pause that campaign. I'm going to test a different campaign. I'm going to be more aggressive or more conservative with this and see what kind of results it gets. And uh, the troubleshooting process, unfortunately, I can't just say like there's one thing to do that's going to fix it for everyone. But that's the basic idea is you test um, different campaigns campaigns. Another thing I can see if, if a person's targeting really broad keywords, that can be a, a way to get a lot of impressions. Um, but if you're getting um, clicks on a really broad keyword, let's say targeting a keyword like book, um, the challenge is that might get a lot of impressions and clicks, but there's no way to figure out where those people are coming from specifically. And, uh, it, it's, it kind of takes away the point of this system, which is you can actually be very targeted in, your, um, in what keywords you choose and things. So going too broad on some of the keywords can be another thing that makes it hard to, to diagnose these things. So there's a number of different strategies uh, basically that, that can be learned. And this is why it's so important to get uh, some in-depth education and really learn the ins and outs of this. But like you said, in some cases, um, once you have it going, it, it can be very simple uh, and, and just getting it set up and, and seeing amazing results come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So how do you keep track of your campaigns once you got them started? Like what, what is your system for making sure that you don't, cause you know, I've, I've said like ads before, like with AdWords, I remember one time I said an AdWords campaign and I forgot about it for like six months. <laughs> right. And it's just like just sitting there like wasting money, not being profitable. So how do you actually track this stuff? 
Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm first starting a new campaign and I don't know whether it's going to be profitable or not, I usually check on it every few days. Now the sales results don't always show up or actually they never show up instantly. They never show up right away. It's a few day delay. So I usually have to give it at least a few days. You'll need to give it a few days to get the initial data coming in. And then I'll check on it, you know, um, typically later in the week and at the end of the week and, and so on. Once something is profitable, I can let it run for weeks or months at a time and not really worry about it. But I do make a regular practice of checking typically at least once or twice a week on all of my ads. Another thing that I do is I screenshot the results because um, I want to know sometimes, you know, if I, what were my sales results yesterday? What were they today? What are they tomorrow? And getting that will help me see about where it's going on a day to day basis. Um, Cause there's not really a way to go back and look at your history in the ads. So you got to manually uh, keep track of it, which is so again, it's very simple. If you just take a screenshot of my whole dashboard of, of all the ads that are running, I might also screenshot inside the ad of some of the specific top performing keywords uh, and things like that. So, um, because it's not always, um, let's say intuitive in terms of Amazon's setup or because they don't always give you some of the data you'd like, for instance, they don't separate ebook sales from print book sales, whatever that turns some authors off because it's like, Oh, I'm not sure how to keep track of all this. To me, I think that's great because I'm like, okay, let's weed out some of the other authors in competition. Cause if you learn just a few little tricks like this, it can be very quick can take just a few minutes a day, sometimes even a few minutes a week to keep track. And then, um, because you're educated on how to, how to do this, that means while other people leave, the platform because they're not really sure what's going on. You get more space for yourself in a sense. So that's my mentality in terms of how I approach that. Yeah. So that's a really good point about taking screenshots because like the, one of the big problems right now with Amazon ads is that their reporting is just atrocious. Like it's, it's, it's just, you know, if you're, if you ever done Facebook ads, you know how good their reporting can be if you set up your pixels and everything properly. But on Amazon, it's just like, it just gives you the total. Like here's how much you spent, here's how much you made over the past you know, five months, one year, whatever. Right. So if you're not taking those snapshots, like you said, you have no idea how much you sold last week. Right. Unless you were able to compare the screenshot from this week to last week. Right. Yeah, exactly. And one quick point on that is, you know, sometimes the results go up and down. So there's lulls in, in sales and book sales and, and ad things. So, um, I would, I would always say when you're looking for data, uh, some, some people I see just in general, even outside of ads, they'll freak out if their book sales are not what they were yesterday or something. And it's like, this is a little bit, it's not a real long, it's not a six month process, but you want to give things at least a week or two to really get some good uh, data with your, uh, with your ads and not judge things based off of just where things were one day um, to the next look at the pattern over a, a period of time. Yeah, definitely. And I think I'll say the thing, especially it's like the more keywords you add, the more, specific keywords you have, like you might only spend one or two or $3 on one of these really niche keywords. And it, you know, you might spend $3 and not make any money and you might spend $4 and make like $40 in sales. Right. So there's a lot of variability when you're working with, with small numbers of clicks and so forth. And so I think understanding like the math behind that, like, you know, if you only have five clicks, you know, it's not, it's not enough to give you like mathematical certainty that that campaign is either working or not working. So you definitely have to give it lots of clicks and more time especially depending on the keywords you're using to make sure you have enough data to make a good decision whether or not that campaign's working for you. Yeah, exactly. Great point. And so for instance, um, sometimes people are wondering, is my ad working? And it's got like seven clicks or 17 clicks or even, you know, 20, 30 something. And it's like, it's a little bit too early to get a lot of information from that. Um, really, I think the 50 click plus point, even the hundred click plus point is where you now start to have uh, so good information. And from an impression standpoint, you know, easily into the tens of thousands of impressions um, before you really start to go, okay, I actually have some data to work with before that it's too early to really start to, uh, to make too many serious conclusions. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So there's an option with sponsored products called auto targeting, which means like Amazon basically just auto picks your keywords and targeting for you. Uh, have you used that option? Do you like that? What are your thoughts on that? I've used it and I've had mixed results with it. So I have heard some authors that have used it and have, have made it profitable. I've been able to make it profitable uh, with a different setup um, 
there's a different dashboard for running ads outside of KDP. So I can target paperback books, uh, for instance, and, and I've seen it profitable with that. But in general, um, it doesn't work as well as doing the manual targeting. And uh, of course, I think that's kind of like a lot of things in life. When you educate yourself, and you actually know how to specifically go after the things that you want, uh, then it's great. The other challenge with auto-targeting is you're basically saying target all these keywords and there's no way to go in there and let's say um, increase your bid on keywords that are working really well or decrease your bid on the specific keywords that aren't working as well. It's just like an all lump, you know, one big lump set of keywords that they're using behind the scenes uh, to target the book. So, by all means, I mean, a person can experiment with it and use it. And if it's profitable, great. I don't think it's a replacement. I don't think you're going to see the true power of Amazon um, AMS ads uh, until you use the manual targeting uh, in the in the sponsored products. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, you know, I, I've had some auto-targeting ads that have done really, really well. And it's just like, you know, but, but, the, but the manual targeting is like way better, right? So it might be like, you know, 10% cost of sale for the manual targeting and the auto targeting might be like 40 or 30 percent right but you're still if you're still making a profit i feel like it's still worth doing um but it's definitely not the optimum way to go about it in my experience yeah exactly and the same thing with you know product to product display um auto targeting some of these other things you know, uh, there, I'm all for like your time, like do it if it's still profitable, you know, add it in. What I would say is if I'm going to focus on something, it's going to be the thing that gets the biggest bang for the buck and then add these things in too, because, Hey, you know, why not just maximize how many sales we're getting as long as it's profitable. Mm, definitely. Awesome. And you shared some great advice today, man. This is really cool. So any kind of last words of advice you give for folks who, you know, haven't, tri haven't tried out Amazon as yet and want to get started. Uh, so the biggest thing I would say is, is get educated. Um, and so I do have some training for those that are interested in it. And, you know, Tom, uh, you and I will be talking more about this for people that uh, want to check it out, but it's an inner circle. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can reach me info at ebookbestsellersecrets.com or ebookbestsellersecrets.com slash inner circle Tom. And you can learn more about what that's about. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, man. And so, uh, one of the cool parts about that program actually is that you actually help your students with like live feedback on their ads, right? So like they can send you like your, like an image of their ads, like here's what I'm targeting, here's the keywords, here's what my bids. And you can help them like make sure that they're not making big mistakes and, and give them advice on ways they can actually improve their campaigns, right? Yeah. And that's was, that was critical because I knew, uh, you know, a person could read about ads. They can listen to a podcast about ads. They could even get a course about ads. And I know from experience and working with my students that there's still a good chance many um, or a portion of people would just not see results from it because they're taking sort of generic advice and they don't know, well, in your case, you need to be bidding lower on this. In your case, that particular keyword, you actually, you don't want that broad keyword or you do. And there's all these little nuances that are individual and this is why I want to make sure a person if you're gonna get this get some sort of personal assistance and mentoring and, and guidance uh, especially a number of students they start running ads and I'm like you're not ready to run ads yet get some more reviews here's how to do that or you know make sure you get this uh, better cover on there and, and things like that so there's so many factors that can determine an ad success or failure that it can be overwhelming and a person could start losing money and just go well these ads don't work uh, and it's actually like well no the ads work it's they weren't being, uh, you know, done properly or with the right setup. And that's why, um, you know, many of my students have been successful or if they were struggling with ads before they come to me, I send them a response in an email, they make some adjustments. Then a week later, their ads have, have taken off or profitable. And, you know, um, I just think, you know, that never would have happened unless they had access to someone that was able to give them that personal guidance. So that's a, a big part of, uh, what the inner circle is about. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And so another thing I'll say on this is I think there's some people who like just like ads and like they're good with the numbers and the data and everything. And they, they enjoy the process of going through and find new keywords. And then there's folks like me who honestly, like, I just hate it. Like, it, it's just like, for me, it, it just feels like so much work and overwhelming and annoying. And I'd much rather just spend my time on creative stuff. Right. So like what I did is I basically just took all the information from your course put it into like standard operating procedures and assign it to my team. So my team is managing those ads for me. And like, that's the same thing I'm doing with Facebook ads, you know, hiring someone to manage my Facebook ads for me because it's just not worth my time. It's not worth my energy. It's not worth my effort because I can get a much, I, I, first of all, I hate it. And it's not, I, I don't enjoy it. it. It's work 
afterwards I feel exhausted, right? And I'm burnt out afterwards. Um, and at the same time, once I get that off my plate and delegate that or have someone teach me how to do it, which is how I started out, right? Um, then I can actually focus my energy, my effort, my time on creating, you know, new books and new products and new projects that are actually going to make me more money in the long term and also just make me a whole lot happier. And I think that's, uh, I mean, this is, this is cool. I think it's so awesome that we have these tools like this, Derek, right? But at the same time, you know, I think when folks say like, oh, I have to do Amazon ads and I have to do Twitter and I have to do all these things, it can be really overwhelming, especially for like creative folks, right? And so I think that's, uh, you know, it's great to have the information. It's great to have the education, but I think you also have to be open to the, op the possibility of either getting that coaching, getting that feedback. So you're not just wasting time trying to figure out yourself or delegating it so someone else can do it for you so you can focus on what you're really good at. Yeah. And that's exactly it. Uh, you know, my attitude, it's kind of like, there's, I hear about these things like a thousand and one ways to market your book. And I'm like, that is not <laughs> what I want to hear. Like, I don't want to have to sift and sort through a thousand and one uh, different things. Give me, give me five things tops to, to do. Uh, so one of the things I, I will say, that's one thing I love about Amazon ads is, you know, if I had to choose between, you know, just a couple different things, Amazon ads would be, uh, you know, at the top in terms of most profitable, most, most able to run on autopilot. And I think that's the big thing, you know, whether you, there's some quick start videos that a person can be up and running in a couple hours, um, or they can, you know, outsource it. They just get some coaching to get some help. But once it's profitable, it's largely, and I don't say completely that you want to forget it, but it's largely set and forget once you have a campaign going in the sense that, uh, you know, I go on, on vacation, I go to seminars, I go travel, I do something, the ads are running, I'm getting consistent book sales in the background, and I'm not even having to log in and think about it. It's just set up and running for me. So it's like, oh, a kind of, um, again, it's not completely once and done, uh, but it somewhat can be uh, in the sense. So that's one of the things that I go, what are just a handful of things I can do? AMS ads are one of them. Twitter would not necessarily be one of them uh, in terms of market a book. And uh, then it's, it's great because it's, it's something that once you get it in place or once you get your team to get it in place or once you get some help getting it set up and you're making it work, then, you know, just check on it once every few weeks and uh, make adjustments as needed and then go on and get back to your creative work, get back to doing what you love. Yeah, totally. And I think the last thing I'll say on this is, you know, uh, you know, I always talk about long-term marketing. Like in our last interview, we talked about personal development, right? And long, that long-term mindset of success where you're saying, you know, I'm not just going to try to, you know, make a whole lot of money this month and then give up if I don't make it. It's like you set yourself up for long-term success. And when you think about marketing your book, you think about what are the things I can do that can give me long-term results. They're going to help me sell my book, not just next week, but next month and next year and 10 years from now too. Right. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I think there's a huge probability that Amazon ads are going to be around five years, 10 years, 50 years from now. Right. Because you look at AdWords, they've been around for, you know, over a decade. Facebook ads have been around for a really long time. Uh, and they're still really profitable for the companies. They're also still really profitable for people buying the ads who know what they're doing, right? And so it just makes sense to me that Amazon ads are going to continue to be around for many years to come. And the folks who get in now, it's like, you know, it's easier than, than, than uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say that, but like, you know, back in the day when there was like Google AdWords first came out, everyone was like, man, it's so easy to make money on Google AdWords, right? Because there was no competition. And it's, it's almost kind of that way now with Amazon ads. It's, it's like, it's so new. There's not a lot of competition. It's really easy to make money with it. So you can, if you learn it now, when you're more likely to be profitable a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you're going to be ahead of the competition because you're going to already have some experience with it. Right. And that I think is one of the keys to success is like you're constantly growing your knowledge uh, rather than getting in the game, you know, really late and then f figuring out how to catch up to everyone else who already knows what they're doing. Right. Yeah. It goes back to the idea. If you're not growing, you're dying and, you know, staying in that constant growth phase, getting in now while the opportunity is, um, you know, the opportunity is always going to be there. And yet there's a unique opportunity now while it's early, while there's not as much competition as there could be while you can uh, really profit with it and optimize it. And then what I think is like, you can really get in now and maximize your book sales, maximize your success. Even if you don't um, do as many ads down the road uh, for whatever reason, you'll at least have start to build up more of a readership base. You'll ideally be building up your email list. You'll be building up your author name. You'll be building up your platform and setting up for long-term success. Just like those who got into, you know, Amazon Kindle publishing or self-publishing, you know, years ago and have built their platform. They got tons of reviews. Now they've built up their readership base. It's just easier once you're established to, you know, ride on that momentum than when someone comes in, you know, brand new to a competitive marketplace. You can still absolutely do it. You can still 
start your self-publishing journey today. You can, you can start at any point in time yet. It's just makes more sense. If you're hearing about it, you know, now then it's kind of like a knock on the door saying, Hey, now's the opportunity. Um, it's just going to be, uh, you know, typically better to get in now than waiting, you know, years and then kicking yourself going, how much did I miss out on? Because I didn't get in earlier. Now I'm starting from scratch, uh, as opposed to getting in when it was, you know, really a fresh opportunity. Mm, absolutely, man. That's great advice. Uh, thank you so much, Derek, for sharing everything today. I really appreciate it, man. It's great to have you back. Yeah. Thanks for giving me the opportunity, Tom. All right, man. Take care.